All right, so we've had some technical issues. Apparently, for those who are just joining us, YouTube flagged my other stream for copyright infringement because we, we, we assume that it's because I was trying to sing a song at some point. <laughs> And apparently, uh, an automated detection th program has d uh, flagged that or something. But now we're back, and everything seems to be working. So, welcome to the stream, I guess. Or to yes. YouTube, whatever. And what we're doing now is that we are looking at an old game that Julie and I played back in March, which we both thought was really cool. So now we are going to try to comment on it. And see how that goes. So double speed sounds sounds nice. Yeah, we can adjust the speed as we go. Times five. Oh yeah. So right now we're just loading in, and it says my spell book here is two one hundred twenty one points, with multiple copies of Epic Card Pillar of Righteous Flame. Okay. Oh, then you loaded. Yeah. That's right. We had some yeah, technical issues the wrong and stuff like that. This is yeah. uh, something we'll, weird we'll going there. Yeah. All right. So here we come into epic. the game. Yeah. Now we go. Here we go. I think you can do the speed to at least two, maybe four or five. Yeah, but I thought we would maybe just do a quick introduction before we start actually ah, talking sure. about the game. Yeah. So. True. In this game, I'm playing my Forest Alliance book, which has been uh, recurring on the channel for a few times, because uh, I, I really dig this book. I've been having a lot of fun with it. The whole uh, premise of the book was to make Ika Mouse work just somehow, just do something to make him playable in the game, because it's, it's a fun card to look at. And you are playing... I, I requested a... a a, a tough book from you because I think this my book was unbeaten until until this game. Oops, spoilers. Uh, <laughs> at least until this. <laughs> but uh, you uh, so you picked your a gate wizard, and you want to talk a little bit about your book? Yeah, I, I played a, a gate wizard, which I played for a while. Yeah, it's no no big surprise. Wizard is pretty strong. Gate wizard is pretty strong, and I've made some changes. Basically, not what my creatures are concerned, but how do I defend the mage? This package I changed around and I wanted to try it. And it is a tough book, which you requested. And it is a pretty tough and nice game, I think. Mm -hmm. The um... opening here for me is pretty standard. If you win the initiative, you open with gate and shard. Move one forward because it doesn't... Makes sense hiding versus her Joktari anyways. She's going to catch up to you. And if you wants to run away, you have your creatures closer. That's a really good point. And let's see. I was just looking at who actually won the initiative role. And I gave you initiative. So that was uh, the first mistake, I suppose, in this game. That's actually, I didn't know that. But mm. I well, should have, of course, it changed depends. it. It always depends on what you want to do yeah that's fair so the first round you cast your gate to voltari and my opening i think has never changed with this book it's always a mana flower and fellella pixie familiar which i think is pretty strong in general but the, the biggest weakness of my book if i have to spoil it for anyone it would be that uh it says Julie, your vo volume is sometimes. Oh, okay. So you know what? I can I can uh, go and adjust his volume on my end. So don't don't you don't have to worry about it, Julie. I'll go and yeah, fine, fine. And we will come back into the game here, like so. So let let me know, uh, John Chief. That's uh, Where Kingdom, I think. Uh, so let me know Where Kingdom if you if it's still bad with Julie when he speaks, if you can't hear him. So what was I talking right. about? So the the Felilla, Felilla. but the, the you, biggest weakness of my book is people. Yeah, it was the biggest weakness for my book is people removing Felilla, definitely. And uh, although then, I I now see that you don't have too many enchants, but I think you rely heavily on them. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I have enough for her to be able to cast enchants for the entire game, more or less, right? I Should even have be a, enough. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I even have a decoy so that I target. Yeah, exactly. And I have a little bit of everything, so she always has some good stuff to put out. And I put in a reclamation recently because then she can do some aggressive stuff. I have a mark for death, and I even have especially well against forges. I think. Yeah, yeah. It's just good enchant in general. At least in my opinion. And then the decoy is for both for kind of some trickery, but it's also good for moving mana from Valilla to your mage, if nothing else. And I think I do yeah, use that in this game. In the right circumstances, a decoy can be worth a lot. Yeah, a lot more Very than one might cases, think. But it, there, there is a case in which it's better than any other card. Yeah, is that you're thinking about nullify, right? No. No, okay, because I'm pretty sure that if you put throw it into a nullify, no, then no, that's seeking dispel. If you're seeking dispel nullify, sorry, decoy, you still get the mana, I think. I'm actually thinking about versus a more, a more experienced player. You decoy an enchantment or whatever you want to try to protect, th making him think that it is an arcane ward and him using an arcane ward to pop your arcane ward, which is a decoy. So now he warded your enchant, which also yeah. works against whatever he does. So okay. That's a very... Him, him waste two actions. Very rare so, uh, fringe situation, but you're right. Have you ever experienced that? Like in, in practice? No, but I have thought about using it. Yeah, I've thought about it too, but I, I don't think... I mean, I could do it in this but, book, I suppose. On, it's like put in on a regrowth. You're right. That would not be too bad. You, 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 usually need, your, you need your opponent to pop it with an arcane ward, though. if, if uh, Because it's also possible to get rid of the ward via seeking the spell or just casting anything Yeah, on it. But, but the decoy... I, but maybe... He the decoy doesn't care. The... Yeah, right. but if your opponent dispels it, the, the enchantment below it, just to try to fish for a ward or not, then yeah. he gets it for free, basically. Of course. So, it's, true, it's but I, I can just, in it's that case, like... I can still reveal the decoy and get the mana back. Of course, yeah. yeah. But so... you did not protect the enchantment. No, 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 but I never did because it's a decoy. We're back in the actual turn order here. Oops. Go in like that. So you were summoning a Gorkin Archer early on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because this is the most mana efficient you could ever be with your Gate Wizard. If you win the initiative and your opponent is not double moving, you can put out a Gorgon, which puts you to zero, and then you have to ritual do something, which is very strong. Because you have a spawn point in a level 4 creature by turn four, uh, 2. Yeah, and Ritual of Calic being the new card that everyone's using. And I'm also using it in this book here on my Felilla turn 2. So there's actually, if, if people know my book here, there's a window here in turn 2 where you can kill Felilla easier than normal. Which is, no one has done it yet, but it's kind of interesting at least. Yeah, but... If anyone would ever try it, do, do you don't even need to ritual right at the start? Oh, you do. Yes, to be able to you afford do have to Dorsius. To pass the Dorsius. Okay. Yes. Okay, so, so that's there's the a downside. very small window. Very small window, yeah. And people would sort of know, need to know in advance. And so you're doing Ritual of Calic mm -hmm. on the Gorgon Archer as well, because it heals itself. And mine will, of course, heal because of the Dorsius. Yeah. So the a big downside to playing a, a book like mine is that there's actually a quite a few books that rely on getting Dorsius out at the early stages. So and I don't cast it turn one because I want Felilla turn one. Yeah. And therefore I could end up being denied. This is always what I'm trying to say, and also the reason why I have Dorsius in the book with Samandriel. The main reason is to have a Dorsius to block other people's Dorsius. Yeah. More a counter than, the, the, than me actually wanting to use it because it is that good. 
And as I now see it, do you have a joint strength in this book? I think yes, it's coming down, right? Yeah. And yeah. I think one of the best enchants to put in Dorsius because it gets so super annoying to deal with it. And it's Beastmaster only, yeah. So this is only possible in Beastmasters. But this is, uh, yeah, you're right. And I think you remove it in this game. And I've, I've added an extra copy of Joint Strength to this book. Yeah, because I always run two Joint Strength in yeah. my books. Because I think so, it's the most here's what valuable I had. enchant to destroy yeah. Dorsius. Maybe here's my, my question for you. Him. Yeah. If, if I have a decoy on joint strength when the creature that has joint strength gets dis destroyed do you think that the decoy would move with the joint strength move joint i, th I think it yes it, sh it should yeah so that's kind of cool you, you need to have a animal creature in the zone of your beast master though to move it right yeah <laughs> So when you have a joint strength on the board, you just make a point out of remembering to do that. Otherwise, well, you're playing suboptimally in a way. If anyone who's joined the stream, because I see we have a few viewers now, which is nice, uh, let me know if you have any Mage Wars questions whatsoever, not ne not necessarily just about the game, and then Julie will be do his best to answer. <laughs> yeah, that's the deal. <laughs> okay, so we're moving into the deployment phase here, and you're putting out, you're just going to be putting out amazing creatures throughout this entire game, which is sort of the, the crux of the, the gate build always. So a devouring jelly yeah, comes but, out here. But I also thought about this game after we played it, and I think I should have put out another jelly right in turn four. So in the next. Yeah, turn. okay. Yeah, I agree. So I haven't. Yeah, I should have done that because then my teleports get way more threatening for you and I can just port you in. Hmm. And I do have the pillar in my book here, so of course there's always that threat because they're non living. Yeah, the pillar is very good against jellies and also in this game, but we're gonna see later. But yeah. the pillar against jellies always rolls burns. <laughs> I think, yeah, I can confirm that, and they always burn. They like to burn. I feel yeah, fire are... is the best way to go versus jellies because they always burn. At least fair time. enough. Yeah. So it's a seven up. It's actually a fifty percent chance of a burn landing on a non-living creature. So it's not that <laughs> far off. Yeah, but st but still, you have a fifty percent, and afterwards a sixty-six percent to deal damage. So it's only a thirty-three percent chance to deal damage at all through a burn and they always burn. Yeah. Because if even if you get a burn Alright, and so I'm I summoned a Dark Fan Ask, but of course I can't keep up with your creature production in this game. There's just no way. First of all I don't have them in my book. I don't think we can see your deck here. No. Can I do anything to reveal your deck? No. I don't think so. You don't control this group. No. Alright. But I'm assuming that you have a, quite a few creatures in this book of yours. And every time I summon a creature as well, you get mana on your gate. The gate. Fantastic. Fantastic. Is that the best spawn point in the game? I, I would say it's probably. Okay, I'm back. For oh, some sorry. reason, I dropped the video. Oh, okay. Do you need me to share it again? No, it's fine. It's fine. I can see okay. it. Left the call and rejoined it. I'm going to turn up. But I think I'm missing 10 seconds or something. Okay. Uh, okay, I so what said, did I miss? I just I summoned an ASP and I was talking about how I can't keep up with your creature production at all in this game. Of course. Yeah, because you need to forecast them and I don't. Because yeah. I think this is the round where I started moving around left and right. Not too sure. And now, since you stay so far back, I should have summoned another jelly, but I don't, I think. Mm. Yeah. It's either a gargoyle or a gremlin. I, I'm not too sure. Probably a gargoyle. But I did move Dorsius forward, the only creature that I could really move. Of course, Valetta would stay back, but I, I moved Dorsius forward. 
which is a little bit dangerous, but I do have to engage with you, I think, in this game to have any chance of success. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. I mean, you, you could run a curse heavy build with Falella, hmm. even transfuse ish thing that would allow you to stay back. Yeah. Maybe you would even need one more turn to protect Falella, like with a, a gator or something, which is also pretty good on her. But then you can see my book here that that's not the case. So, yeah, but I think I don't know it when I'm playing against you. Yeah. So well, I also out... made some plans. Hmm. Putting up glove skill and hunting spear this turn. That can't be right. Oh, I'm, I'm sticking to it. Okay. Interesting move for myself here. There's the cargo. Yeah, you put out the gargoyles, of course, and that's really nice. They are really good defensive creatures. I'll put it up on the screen here with flying and intercept. And yeah, one, on one guard. main reason for them is is actually to intercept pillar shots. Hmm. Yeah, they're good at that. Jellies. And since I always lose my jellies to pillars, I think I tried it in this game to put out one gargoyle before the pillar, because very often I. Oh, I'm seeking the the joint yeah, attacks, this, and, this and I'm very happy about. It. Yeah, and this this is where I realized I need to have two at least two in the book, because I just put it in right before I, we played this game, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go use joint strength wizard," and then seeing this spell. Oh, okay, mm. <laughs> that's to be expected. Uh, but then you did move forward, which is nice for me. Because I want to engage you. And I'm even yeah. risking my asp here by double moving it and you get to shoot at it with your yeah, Gorgon. I shoot it, but the Gorgon yeah. misses it. I think like, so, yeah. Snake packed, I guess. Don't hurt each other. Ah, uh, of course. Lovely. So yeah, I think the, the Dorsius moves last year to not get shot. And I know it, yeah. so I... I will shoot the ass. So I'm putting out the gloves with skill here and the spear. Hmm. Yeah, it's a fine. I suppose it's fine getting it out early. I, I'm hoping, I think, to take out. My objective here is to take out your Gorgon Archer because that's the biggest threat on my on the board for me. I only have one way of removing uh, weeks, which is the purify, and I need to save it for where it's super important. So it ends up. I don't even know what my second action here is. No, I, I, I think you just said. Yeah, we can look at your because... card if you're okay with that. I suppose. I yeah, can sure. You had a regrowth in hand. Okay, that's a good thing to get down early. <clears throat> the regeneration, probably for the mage. I'm assuming. Yeah. Must be. Yeah. And sure. I put out the hunting spear. For the mage. Yeah. <laughs> But I think I wanted says... to try to get the ass for uh, action advantage next round. Yeah, you wanted to get rid yeah. of the asp, of course. And because if you had gotten the asp here, I have the last action. Hmm. It's super important for me that you don't get the asp, but also that he soaks your actions here gives me a little bit of an advantage that I otherwise wouldn't have. Yeah, I, I wanted to kill the asp because then I have the last activation. Right, right, but you will get that no. in due time. No, you have initiative. Okay, I have it anyway. Not, not too sure. But I thought the more often you try against the asp, the higher your chances are that you actually will hit one time. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> And big, big fat chef says it's awesome to see the game is still alive. The game is very much alive. And for those that don't yeah, know, it's very alive. Mage Wars 2.0 has been announced. So uh, at least it's been in the works. It's, it's it has been announced to be in on the drawing board. And I think they, it yeah. sounds to me like they're committed to following through with it. Right? I'm assuming. Yeah. That's I've in, also heard rumors guards. about it being Kickstarter or something, but I'm not too sure. There's not, not much more info about it than All right. they want to do it and they have a, have had a survey, right? Okay. 
Yeah, that, yeah. Oh, and if you big fat chef, and for anyone else who are interested, should of course go to the forum and find that uh, survey so that you can and answer it. And I'll probably just yeah, find it here and drop it in the chat. Yeah, it's in the general somewhere, pretty high up. So now about the game. My mana is low. I'm out of rituals. I think it's gremlin time since I got one of each creature out. I think now I'm just trying to get board board advantage. And if yeah. I recall correctly, you will try to snipe the gorgon, and I will do something with the gorgon, and this is why you try to focus on me. Yes, I, you did something. We'll, we'll see in a second, I suppose. Did I enchant the Gorgon? Because I like to enchant the Gorgon. <clears throat> My favorite enchants on the Gorgon are either Arcane Ward or or Brace, depending on opponent. So I'm stopping the video here because we have a question. It says, Hi Kitchen, what do you think about Pillar as a card? To me it seems it's too ubiquitous. Even Dark Books basically always runs it. Is it healthy for the game in its current status? Do you want to take this one? Mm. Mm. I, I think the, the question is addressed for you, but yeah, I will but also comment on it afterwards. I, I think we agree on this one, though. <laughs> I think a lot of Maybe. Mage Wars players do. Yeah. So oh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll address it here. So I definitely agree with the statement that the card is too ubiquitous. I have talked a lot about pillars in some of my videos and I have considered making like a uh, a playlist or like a, a video compilation of all the times where I have used the pillar to really, really great effect. Sometimes I've had it, uh, one, at least one time I've had it roll like 86 dice by, of course, spending more cards and getting more mana, spending more mana on it, but nowhere near 86 mana. And the, the problem is that the card is so good and can do these things, so everyone can use it for nine mana and two spellable points or four spellable points, even six spellable points. It's always worth it. There's like there's almost no situations where you can't make use of the pillar. That's true. Yeah, yeah I and, also recall what one game where I had the setup for one action dealing. 36 dice versus uh, the same target, a mage, yeah. which also included Pillar, but mostly Tsunami and Wall of Thorns. But uh, it carries a lot of damage potential. Mm. And the only one reason I would see someone arguing about Pillar, which is not really an argument I see being made, is that it's better cast early on than later so I always feel that aggressive books tend to benefit more of pillar than defensive ones because you can like aggressively claim a zone even if it's a spawn point you don't care you can just throw the pillar in yeah. and get some very good use out of it because I think the later the game gets against armor, vet belt, aegis, interceptors, whatever the later the game gets, I think you can do more and more protective measures against Pillar. Yeah. So the only argument I could see pro Pillar, and this is also the one that I sometimes do, is that aggressive players tend to get more use out of it than defensive plays. Yeah, okay. But of course, you get way too many dice and more control out of it for how cheap it is. Mana and spell book point in the spell. Book. Yeah. So. I just think it's too good for the price. And the problem for in each mana and spell book points, yes. It we both agree on that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. One one major major problem I have with it is beside the price and in mana and spell book points, there is the ethereal tag. If it would not be ethereal, a lot of problems, and I think a lot of problems would already be solved because pillar basically kills 
incorporeal creatures. You can't do uh, them. Yeah. One of my arguments is that it basically have made all incorporeal creatures unplayable in Mage Wars, which with that one single card. And I think it, uh, for, to answer the question, I don't think it's healthy for the game. No, it's bad for in the its game. current state. Yes, in the current so. state, it, like it, there's a way to. Every card, I believe, can be adjusted by costing it accurately. Any card, you could have a card that's win the game, but if it costs a thousand mana, then you know it wouldn't be overpowered because no it's one can get a thousand yeah. mana. Yeah, yeah. So, so stuff like this, right? If if you can, if you put like if you double the cost in mana and double the cost in spellable points, then we're getting to a point where it's probably overcosted. But the the trick is to find the right point for it, and the, the argument is that, uh, that currently it is definitely not at the right point. So I think we'll leave the pillar talk yeah. there. Uh, then there's another question. Did Arcane Wonders announce 2.0? I could not find any news on their website. It's on the forum, and I posted the link to the survey, but I'm, I'll post the, the, the link to the uh, specific t uh, post as well here in the chat. So there you go. There's not been a whole lot of news. They just announced that they are thinking about it, and then had that and survey to address it. Yeah, and then you have heard some rumors about kickstarting, but this is not confirmed by anyone. I think. No, right? definitely yeah. not. All right, and they said that they want to address some problems that a lot of people had with the game as it is right now. Yeah. They try. At least this is what they say. Yeah. We could talk about Mage 2 or Mage Wars 2.0. Maybe we'll do that after the game then. Because it's going to be a bit of a long yeah. time. Yeah. Alright. So we're moving into the deployment phase here again in the game. Round 5. I think it's great time. Yeah, it's great yeah. time. Uh, yeah. Turn 5. And you are putting out gremlins now, which is problematic. But they like they won't win you the game. They're going to be super annoying. But I can, in, in theory, kill them at least. Right? It's the, the gremlins are great because they're cheap and they deal with your creatures and with any stupid conjurations you might put out. Yeah. And they are there to chip out some damage on your mage, hopefully, because they're not good versus doors. Kremlins are not the way to go oh. versus doors. They can I can I leave you with the game for a second? Because my hamster is going bonkers, and <laughs> so I need to. Yeah. Sure. Get, yeah. Okay. So you comment on the game, no and I'll be right back. Yeah. <clears throat> so I move down with a gargoyle and guard for any double actions happening against the ooze and my mage. And also, the gargoyle can intercept color shots. So at least something has to attack into the gargoyle before it, the pillow can go down on the ooze. If I remember correctly here, the ass will suicide. Try to knock off the guard. Because the plan is to do something with the Gorgon. I'm not really sure what what we did in this turn, but we'll see. Suicide has coming down. And the, the Gargoyle is doing a great job in this game. I think I think he kills the Asp. He gets a weak token. Yeah. All right, I'm back. And I brought the furball because I know the internet loves mm. cute little animals. So I offer my tribute in, 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 in furries, furry pets. And I'm going to leave her here with me mm -hmm. for a little while, but I'm going to have to put her back. Swish. She gets impatient. So what's happening so in the I game? Think I, I called the suicide as here. All right. Yeah, I'm hoping he just roll, roll. Oh, he d failed to defend. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you got the week off and I got the kill, right? Yeah. 
That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So theoretically, yeah. he could have survived forever, but you managed to get him here. I yeah, think he I, got. I said the gargoyle did a great job in this game, and I think he mm -hmm. always rolled pretty good. Yeah, I think so too. Pretty solid damage. So, but it also was the third attack against the asp. Yeah, which is average so... then, I think, because it has a thirty-three percent chance of being hit. And also, the week was a very low chance to get the weak. Yeah. And I'll end that. So I think the S attack though. Uh on doors here, yeah. This was basically and max damage. From my we... point of view, I was thinking that if you get a few weeks on Dorsius, you might not be so inclined to kill her. So uh, him. Yeah that, that so, uh, that's the plan because I hate killing Dorsius. Yeah, so that's fine. This we is both... awful. <laughs> From both of our perspectives, we are sort of, sort of thinking, okay, then maybe that's fine. And I actually move Dorsius back, All right? Yeah, because I think mm -hmm. I don't want to engage you here. And there's no way I'm getting at that Gorgian anyway. It's kind of tricky. I'm not too sure what, what your plan was for this round. Let's see, what do I have? I have a Gator Toughness for Dorsius, and then I have Timberwolf ready to cast. And I don't remember if I cast it here. I think I do. I think you do, yes, because yeah. I weaken the doors and the timber wolf is hitting me hard all the time. Yeah, I think so. Yep. So it should be coming because we should go to a one and a half speed here. Yeah. Maybe even two times because yeah. it's pretty slow, I think. And nothing too spectacular will be happening. You summon a creature, I will enchant something, ping something, uh -huh. whatever. Fedora is enchanting uh, me with what? Let's... Hawkeye. Uh, oh, and I have the decoy on. <laughs> and the rhino oh, right. Okay, toughness. Oh, can I peek at your enchants here? I'm assuming that's okay. Yeah, sure. I think one should be in a Kiros and a rhino, yeah. Yeah. Because defense way, right? is off. awesome. Yeah, one of the dangers of the wizard is if you think you are immortal, and then suddenly the enemy will prove you wrong. So you are being smart and protecting your mage early. Which makes it really tricky to kill the wizard. Yeah, but I I think I should ditch the Akiros earlier and always go with the Rhino, and uh, with the Regrowth. Okay. Which would have helped me a lot in this game. I don't think I will ever use the reroll from Akiro. Oh. Even huh. once. I'm not too sure. I love a getting Akiro down, down, though. I, I I think I would prefer Hawkeye, though, over Akiro, but I would love both. So, what you're thinking on casting mm. Akiro over Hawkeye? Uh, it depends on the build, and I have actively chosen Hero in this book because I wanted to try out the freeze spells with the freeze tokens, Beam of Frost. Because oh. of my of my bad, bad loss against people filter in the German Nationals. Special mention there. All right. All right. I don't remember and, that game, I'll be honest. And I've, I've lost both games to Tiebreaker. One time I tried to focus on Dorsius and I had, I think, one damage out of 32 and he had three damage out of 37 or something, so he had more life remaining. Can you win? After 90 minutes, and I All couldn't right. kill kill Dorsius, and I thought with Akiros and Beam of Frost you can do a lot of damage through Aegis and Region because if you hit the Double Frost, it's basically for direct damage. Yeah, and with an Akiro, you have a 86 percent chance or something to hit the Double Freeze. Okay. Yeah, that's in my in my mind that's above seventy five percent, then it's basically a hundred percent, which is which is a flaw it, in it my cap. Yeah, it, in, in my yeah. calculations, it ends up being a hundred percent, and that's why I get punished for so, that. Sometimes. So, it, it, in this book, 
Oh, you you just oh, we're back in. We it, are, it probably yeah. was worth. Yeah. Did I remove it? Oh two. yeah, I did. Yeah. T times two should be enough. Yeah. No, this is the turn where where you try to start focusing the mage. Yeah. Okay. At least I make in like a showing of trying to do it. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. What do I have? Kajara here. Why did I put Kajara down? But if you remove the spear, I suppose I would have Kajara. I'm not sure. I think you will throw the spear here. Yeah, probably. But you protect it, so why would I throw it? Do I throw it at the gargoyle? You get... No, you throw it at me, and I refuse to intercept, I think. And oh. then you focus me next round. Which was maybe a mistake, because I think you should intercept if you can. Yeah, because this now gets pretty ugly for my wizard faster than I expected. That's not this turn, though. We're getting a little bit ahead no, no. of it, I think. So, but I yeah, I pay a mana port here, I think. So it's pretty much stalemate and wait what the other person is doing. I think mm. you hit me. Oh, and I have a mark for death on you, yeah. All right. So, yeah, if you look at the board state, this, at this point, there's no way I'm getting to the Gorgon Archer, right? Like, you're putting it at a defensive position. And if I have to get to that back line, I would need to send my mate alone, which doesn't yeah, work out. Now you hit me to seven. Oh, yeah, that was a good hit. You, you would even have gotten me to nine, but now I have four armor. Is there a the rhino? Yeah. And I get stuck. This was a really good hit with the thing. Oh, I chant of rage the, the fairy. Uh, <laughs> and this, yeah. There's a this little will bit be a mistake. in the chat here. So people are saying that you can save games in Octagon. I don't think that's a thing, uh, Simon. Simon. So if you know how to save games in Octagon, you I mean you can take a screenshot and then return to the same game, I suppose. But I don't know of any other ways to save games in Octagon. <laughs> Maybe he's thinking about um, the replay we are looking at here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but if anyone else knows about the tabletop simulator game that you can buy on Steam, I highly recommend that one, and you can save games in that. But it costs money, where Octagon is free. <laughs> so, so I, Oh, and I landed a cripple on you. I remember celebrating that. Yeah, That's pretty cripple. good. I, I, I said it was a stack, but it's a cripple, yeah. Yeah. Can I try to remove it, but I was not lucky. Mm -hmm. And I think this turn is the turn where you teleport me. And I'm so stupid. And reveal the Chain of Rage on your Falella on my mage, and she hits me for not too few dice, because it's mm, even I... three. And I think she gets three crits off. Which is definitely a mistake on my part. I should have just raged her on a random gremlin or the newly summoned creature. If I even summon one. No, I don't summon a creature here. Because I only have six mana. I should have raged her on either the gremlin at the back or the gorgon or the jelly. Probably the jelly. Mm. Uh, and I think at this turn I was actually planning on stealing your Gorgon, teleporting her for nine mana to my corner and then trying to focus it down in one turn. But then something happens, I think, during the turn that changes my mind. Uh, I'm going to have to put the hamster back, so I'll be back in a second. So yeah, for me this round looks pretty interesting because I reviewed the regrowth. And I'm low on mana. And I even want to reveal the Chant of Rage for two mana this turn, so I basically only have four mana left. And that's why I do probably Seeking and maybe another Enchant on me, something. Probably Enchant the Gorgon. 
but definitely no deploy from the gate here. <laughs> but this is getting pretty scary pretty soon. And I return. Oh, I, I should have sped it up so we get to into the round. <laughs> so yeah, Jason so... Grace comes in here and sabotages the game like he always does with his yeah, questions and, and his gets, meandering. Get some smack talk in the chat, but that summarizes the game so far pretty well. Yeah. Spear to the face, refused intercept, the rest is on the board. And the Akira's favor which was revealed, did nothing, and got dispelled. But yeah, that's it, right? And yeah, I think so. Of course. The Asp. Oh, you did yeah, have to regrowth down. Yeah. yeah, and I rebooted this round. That's why I only have six mana. Right. And so you shoot with the Gorgon first here. On yeah, you. because I, I know that you like to hit melee with your mage, so I thought mm. it would be a good idea to... Get some weeks on you, and and also if you, yeah, that was very lucky. But I think you switch to spells soon. You reveal the channel rage on Valera mm -hmm. and target your mate with it. And we agreed here yeah. that you should have hit, put the hate token on ba basically anything else. Maybe not the gorgon. <clears throat> or... Yeah, I think I think that maybe even that changed. It for you to attack or focus the mage. This is the re the decision where where I see okay then because you, now I can both save Valilla and maybe get at you and you spend all your wizard actions here early on. You have no mana. That's the next reason, yeah. And yeah, I can't so even bar with the gargoyle. I yeah. see a window of opportunity here where I might actually be able to kill you and focus down your mage, which is not my normal playstyle, but. In this case, it seemed like the right choice, especially with the Chana Rage on Falella, because otherwise she has to move out here in the middle of everything. Now you're giving me an option to sur sur uh, yeah, get by the Chana Rage, right? So here's the teleport moving you yeah. to the corner. Which, which was planned on the Gorgon, but now yeah. I see that I'm in trouble. Well, Wizard is notoriously <laughs> tricky to kill. Yeah, but I think I'm at 17-ish damage or something here. After this know. round, because the, oh, after the Doris hits four dice, the Wolf for five, the Lella for three, your Mage four. Yeah, but the Mark for Death down here is... Oh, six critical coming in from the Wolf. Yeah, so that's... What, what did I say? 17 damage, I think. I think the yeah. hits for three crits. Yeah, and as I said, the Kremlins are there for chip damage. But so far, your rolls are pretty good against the wizard. Mm. Oh, you get four crits. The spear on should have probably dealt five, not seven. And the wolf should have dealt three, yeah. not six. So, uh, two and a half, yeah. Yeah, I rounded it even up. Yeah. Now you dispel the... The right hide? Regrowth? The regrowth. Oh, regrowth, regrowth. Yeah. You probably yeah, have gone for the rhino hide. In rolling crits? You, no, no, I, I, I took the rhino hide. Oh, okay. good. Okay. Good, good because good. of mana. <laughs> probably because, because of. of oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. I had to do the re, the rhino hide. But I think yeah, it's yeah. actually it's, that's I, I way better. Yeah, because but you're uh... confident in rolling crits. <laughs> Apparently, so, yeah. yeah. So, so then. It's for three crits. 14, and I, th I thought I was at 17, so Doris is maybe also three crits. Yeah, she's coming in with... Oh, he, he. Comes in with four, three, four dice. Why four? Because why four? the mark for death because on you, the right? marked. Yeah. Okay, no no three crits, but only two. Oh, you, you still have three armor after that, yeah. Damn. Five armor would have been impossible to take down, so I think getting rid of the Rhino Hide is actually fine. I don't know. Do you have a veteran spell in this book? I do. I think it, it comes down later. Yeah. All right. I'll speed it up so we get to the end of the round. Okay. Oh. So I'm at 16. Yeah. 16 damage, not 17. Shame on yeah. me. 
Uh, now I obviously put the shield on, I think, for every yeah. round. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, times 25 is a bit too far. Uh, but you're or done the planning phase. So, yeah. So, so now I either have to get out of here. I think I need to get out of here. Yeah. Or apply, apply counter pressure. I have the Deathlock in hand and a Corrosive Orchid. I'm going to peek at what you put in hand here. Mm. Teleport, right, to get away and brace yourself. Well, good choices, definitely. And yeah, Well, I, I only have eight mana left, so that's pretty, pretty, pretty yeah, good okay. choice to make. Yeah, fair mm -hmm. enough. Do So what happens here? I think so I summon the Corrosive the... Orchid, yeah. And you get rid of my uh, pants. Pants and the shield gets removed, and unfortunately, no mm. corrode. Yeah, that no would have corrode. been nice. This is but now you're down to two armor. Here. And then three damage coming in there. So more pressure on the mage. Now you're at 17, maybe that's what you were thinking of. And then yeah, you move in be. behind the guard here. And then I realized that, of course, you were going to move up behind the guard, so I should have put a card on Felella, because now Felella could, in theory, move up here. Then she can't attack you, so she's free to do whatever, and then she would have been allowed yeah, to that's true. cast a spell. So, what am I doing? <laughs> to, to, to even prep a card on Felella if she's Chan of Rage, just for yeah. the small window of opportunity that your opponent so I bank on her oh, actually to do something. I bank on her getting the defense here, but she fails. Oh, and takes three damage back. That's kind of bad. Yeah, because the gargoyle is MVP this game. Yeah, true. At Very least true. It's rolling damage. And I realized yeah, I should have waited like... because you just regard with this freaking gargoyle. So true. Yeah. Yeah, and once your opponent is out of quick casts, the interceptor is really strong. Hmm. Because only the combination of action and quick cast allows to get something past them. Yeah. And so part of the reason why I put down this corrosive orchid, it, it, the the tipping point for my decision is because it's in the same zone as my mana flower. So now your blue gremlins won't want to stay in the zone and attack my mana flower forever. At least putting it, uh, the Corrosive Orchid in a zone where you already have another Conjuration makes it slightly better and more worth it. So that, I think, was part of the reason why I went to that one. True. It's also great to uh, pop the shield. Mm -hmm. It makes it even better for you to have a teleport zone. Yeah, Where you true. can teleport me in. You can teleport me in, pop the shield, and attack with something. So... Mm -hmm. Orchid is especially good against Wizard. Yeah. So you shoot with a Gorgon at Ferrella, but this time at least she dodged. She could have died here, so I'm happy that she didn't. <clears throat> and I had the Deathlock in hand, but I guess... Though. Does she? Oh. <coughs> Don't spoil it. <laughs> I think she lives, though. <laughs> I think mm. I remember that she lived for a long time. Dorsius moves up, and what does he do? Does he just he attacks? Yeah, I'm gonna be applying the pressure here. I guess I'm still planning to do the deathlock next turn, so I'm thinking I want to get some damage on you here and now while while I have the chance before you get your all your creatures in order. Hmm. Maybe it would have been a good move here to teleport the jelly down into your zone. I don't hmm. think I'd do it here. I guess save my wizard. Yeah, well, maybe. <clears throat> because then it's also in the orchid zone. The wolf can destroy all your investments. Gremlin comes in. Text Dorsius. Okay. Well, those is not scared of a little gremlin. But maybe you didn't move it to my mage zone because I had the corrosive orchid in there. Is that right? 
But the jelly doesn't care about the orc. Oh, no, I mean the, the gremlin that just moved. I think I wanted to save the mana for a double port. Ah. So I have six mana left. Oh, you have precisely port. six mana. Yeah, I um, wanted to port the jelly towards you. And now I can't. So I think I just stabbed the Palella. Yeah. And I ran two to the left, setting up for the Deathlock in the opposite corner in the next turn. Oh, and she fails. And she does die. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that Palella goes pretty, down. Pretty lucky. Yeah, I mean, I attacking into the Gargoyle Sentry was unnecessary. If I had put an enchant on her, I would have enchanted with her instead. So I definitely should have done that. Mm. Yeah, okay, that but was... Yet again, I should not even have allowed her to hate my wizard. I should have no, no, yeah. told her to hate something else. And you turn on the shield, of course. What did you enchant yourself with here? Embrace yourself, right? We have already this is that embrace, one. yeah. God, what's entry here? No, I, I think lock. I wanted to get some distance, but you put the death book down, so everything rushes to the left. Because of that very good round, two round. Yeah. I'm sitting at 17, 15. 17, mm, 15 the board, yeah. the board state yeah. here, it's yeah. going to be really hard for me to kill your wizard. That's almost impossible for me to get at you here. So by putting the deathlock in the opposite side of the board, I move the fight and have your slow creatures have to waddle over there. And you can't really move and guard with the gargoyle sentry efficiently. And so I just think I needed to move the fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I also don't really want to move one left with my wizard first because then I'm in range again. Yep. You can do all sorts of stupid things. So this is a pretty good move. Yeah. Hmm. Gate of toughness. And, and you have... I'm now wondering whether it would be. <clears throat> A good decision to maybe pop the gate um, in the left row. In uh, here? Like in the middle of the left, yeah, in here. Yeah, okay. Against Yoktari. Because I feel a lot of control. You, yeah, because usually the one where it is right now is the more offensive position, and the one to the left is the more defensive position. Yeah, because this this uh, position at the left is easier protected by walls against Alistas and whatever. <clears throat> this is the more offensive one. True, <clears throat> because you can't also block the Gorgon that easily with a wall line of sight. You uh, do you run any walls in your wizard? I do. Okay. Yeah, because then you can wall it off yourself. All right. But if if the gate was here down, down in the left, you would have had more troubles in choosing where to put the death lock. Absolutely. Because then the yeah, creatures then... would have been out quicker. And I usually seem to try to defend against the Yoktari more than I do try to pressure her. Or do I? Depends on the build. Yeah, I think my Jokshari uh, is actually not that aggressive. Um, at least not in how I've been playing it. I spent a lot of turns setting up <laughs> and casting creatures for my mage action. So. True, true. But then still you focus mage. Teleport pit mage. Yeah, not, that's not the plan, but it worked out here, and I don't think that's something I've <laughs> done before either. I, I, I tend to just rely on out-sustaining my opponent because of Dorsius, and that's been working really well for me. Yeah, usually you just have your opponent focus Dorsius, and you defend the Dorsius, and then you win. Yeah, and I because kill Creek. Uh, Dr. Ari is really good at killing key enemy creatures. Like, I can always get yeah. at them and I deal good damage. So, if you have, like, in, that was you too, where you played the, the Minotaurs, I think. 
and I murdered yeah. your one minotaur. When you get a minotaur of the field like that, it, and I didn't lose my dorsiers, it's just a massive advantage. And that's yeah, usually how I win true, with this book. True. It's especially good with the bees. Yeah. And mm. the bees are just amazing. I, I don't think you should put more than one bee in your book necessarily, but putting one in for those few enemies you encounter that don't have anything to deal with a swarm, they can just win the game on their own sometimes. And I think putting two bees in is fine, but I, I don't know how yeah. often you get the chance to actually cast them. Yeah. The thing is, you do have to hard cast them. I think you get a lucky kill on him here. No. Oh. Okay. No. Wrong. Wrong. But then I do get the corrosive mist. From the... Yeah, you get the orchid and the, the wolf with the wooden oh, prey. Yeah. Does he kill her? Him? I think I forget it's... to use the wounded prey for the most of this game. Mm. Which is um, not something I'm proud of. Well, I've been pretty good at remembering the Wounded Prey in general with this build, but it's always tricky. Yeah, the Wounded Prey is very good. Yeah. So, yeah, Gremlins going towards the left. And I wonder why the Gremlin didn't attack you, because you were on guard. Maybe. I did have used it this defense already. So that's probably why you chose to be on the safe side. Yeah, but I I think the the wolf kills him here. Oh, he does. Not too sure. Not too sure. And I actually right. want the wolf to come in. I think this is another round where I screw up. Yeah, I have the jinx, and I want to jinx you, and you move away, which I didn't expect. So I just double move. You were surprised by the double move. I think that's what's happening here. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> and you enchanted yourself with... No, 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 no. That was that was me enchanting myself. I enchanted myself with the gate of toughness. If Felella had been alive here, I think it would have been a pretty good board state for me. The damage on yeah, your mage definitely. makes it really nice for me. You have to be very, very defensive, and you're spending mana on the shield every turn. Because you, even if I don't plan to attack you, you cannot know that, and you have to do the defensive move. Yeah. For yeah, those that are wondering why we no are... Two. Sorry? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Because basically right now I'm at two armor. And if I don't put on the shield... Do you still have the Hawkeye? I know, but you could. Uh, I don't think I have him. Did you remove the Hawkeye? You must have. I, I removed it, yeah. Yeah. I have but a if you one. hit me with an acid ball and a boulder, I could go easily up 10, 12 damage. Mm. And then already gets really tricky. And I do have those. So yeah, for, if anyone's wondering why we are commenting on this specific game, it's because there's a, there's a pro gamer move coming. Just wait. Yeah. <laughs> it's worth worth the wait, I hope. It will be worth it. Yeah. At least one I'm proud of. Oh, I should speed it up while we're waiting here in the planning phase. So yeah. I think, I think times five is fine. Yeah, but I can put it down again when we get to the actual round. So my plan here is to kill the Deathlock somehow because I want to heal. Yeah. And you still have the regrowth, right? Yeah. And I think I get a rid of the the enchantment on me here. Try to the death. pump up my defense. You should look at your prepared cards. Use Rust and Disperse, yeah. Good choices, for sure. And I move in to attack you, I think. What am I doing here? Spray of barbs. Right, because that will help with moving. So Hawkeye first on me. Yeah, and I then think spray you got a pretty good roll after after we sorted out how many dice you roll, because Octagon didn't really want you to roll the correct number. Oh. That might be true. I think it, it was that game. I think we see a lot of dice rolls right now. Oh. But at the end, you get 
something to pop the shield and I reveal the brace. Right. So because the of the piercing two when there's spray of the barbs, yeah. Huh. But the second one is popping the shield. Oh yeah, three crits. Lovely. No, the first one does not get two because of the Bracious Yeah, right. but the second one does. Mm. So now yeah, I'm really pop. sad because you popped the shield. Yeah. And then it rolls again for whatever reason, and we don't know why the game kept rolling. <laughs> yeah. And it protects again. Rolled four. Why? Sometimes the automation why goes. Why four? <laughs> I don't know. Why. Yeah, it just just does whatever. Oh, yeah. Four, and then two, uh, and then four again. <laughs> I forgot about this, but it's kind of funny. It keeps going. You got, yeah. Here comes another one. <laughs> yeah. four, I think four. it stops at some point. The automation. Wait, what? Why, why did I put my damage counter up? Uh, good question. Because the first one did nothing, and the second one popped the shield. Hmm. That's a good question. Why do we put up your damage here? Ah, but oh, I think we... Because, ah, because we, we know... Four. We should roll four, so we re-rolled to determine the damage. Right. So the third, the, the four one popped the shield, and the second attack ah, the, And then the, the, nothing? The, the no, no, the three criticals will do one damage, which is exactly what you got, because of your veteran spell and the uh, combination of... Yeah, Stone Drake hide but, and the yeah, first oh, okay, okay, now I see. Yeah, now I see. So I we think... kept the uh, two attack dice roll from above and the four attack dice with four normal and three crit was the yeah. first one that popped the shield. Okay, that must have been very confusing from for those people watching the game. We were in voice chat during yeah. those games, so we had easy communication. So you enchant so me with the rust coming rust. down. Mm. And another weak token coming in on me here, probably. <clears throat> Is it guaranteed so. weak? It's, it's very likely. No, it's oh, four yeah, plus. Yeah. Four plus, yeah. But I, th I think I don't oh. even get one here. I think it's a three. Oh, I got one. Oh, you got one. You got one? Yeah. yeah you got one. <clears throat> And is that the end of the action phases? You just still have a gremlin Should here. Be. Everything, all the creatures are just maneuvering. I'm guarding and moving doors here. So the gremlin and... hits the the thing for one. Oh yeah, you you still uh, you're still going for the deathlock at this point. Yeah. yeah, I even get it down because I do some healerino later on. Right, that's true. But you, I, I, I thought for sure that you would start focusing on my mage. I don't honestly don't not sure why you were not running your mage to the opposite corner of the map, and it's just I think in this game in general it was my opinion that you were way more aggressive than you had to be, because you could have played way not safer. Really the, the style of play that I wanted to do, and I didn't expect you to deal that much damage to my mage somehow. Yeah, that's fair enough, I suppose. Because but basically, I, 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 think was you... at, I was at six six armor with a wet belt and a shield and two interceptors. So why should I yes. run? <laughs> that is true. Six armor, wet belt, shield, and double intercept is pretty much as defensive as one can get. Uh, so Simon Simon ask, is asking about the two, Mage Wars 2.0. I think if you want, Julie, be, the two of us will have a little discussion about Mage Wars 2.0 after this game. Because I've been meaning to yeah, make a video okay. about it anyway, and then I can have your YouTube bounce idea off of. So we'll do it after this game here. We will have a, a little discussion, and you guys can join in the chat as well, of course. Yeah. All right, so we are in the round. You opened with a shot from your... Gorgon onto me, and now I want to move away because I feel threatened. <laughs> and put yeah, up it was somehow. a very good roll, actually. Yeah, you yeah, revealed your sure. defense stuff. I had some defensive stuff, yeah. Gate of Toughness revealed. But with your rust on me, I'm at what? Not a lot of armor? Do I have the Rhino Hide? Yeah, so I'm at three armor. Four with the leather. Yeah. At four weak tokens, so I can purify at some point, but I'm not really running with a lot of mana at the moment. And, and you get now the uh, kite armor down, which is like my 
worst enemy <laughs> with all the jellies. Yeah. You enchanted yourself and they nullify. It's, it's another right now. Nullify, okay. Mm. And I'm playing defensively now, defending my deathlock here. Because I'm realizing that's what's keeping me in the game. The fact that you can't heal is giving me the... Uh, making it so that I still have a chance, at least, to do something in this game. Very, right, very, very are, true. Yeah, we are posturing our creatures. There's not going to be a lot of action this turn, I think. So I'm doing my final... I was maybe thinking about leaving my Zipper Wolf so you could go and attack it and it would get a counter strike, but then nah, I decided it's better to not get damage on it. And we're moving everything in. Alright, so I'll speed it up again. Times five. No, what the game doesn't last much longer, by the way. Like, uh, we've got. What? Really? Oh, it. Uh, I mean, we've got the, the timer bar up here, so it's easy to see. What is, what is all these dots? Is it minutes? Uh, I think it's turns. Turns? It might be. Two more turns? No. Uh, I'm not sure. What else would it hmm. be, though? I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll leave it. Probably. As it is. You have a opportunity to somehow skip through turns. Uh, and yeah, events. turn. Turn and events. Oh, okay, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I thought it lasted for quite a while still. Hmm. It might. I don't remember. We will see. Luke Lemon comes forward and guards. Gargoyle, we guards. I'm pa passing here, so you have to use all your actions. And then, oh, I think, is it this turn? Yes, here we come with my pro gamer move. <laughs> the pro gamer move, yeah. <laughs> and I actually should have put the the how's it called the pants that re-roll effect ah oh, the portland's tempered faults tempered faults <clears throat> the tempered faults yeah Should so I put up my I I remember you scoffing a little bit at me because I said I was doing a pro, pro game move and then I put out Eka Mouse but then here comes the mm -hmm. rouse the beast on Eka Mouse and with all those interceptors and guards that you have set up this little mouse now can move in and attack you and you actually only have two armor and he is piercing one so you get one armor against his two yeah, dice attack he here. actually hits me for for two dice I think two yeah, two, damage. Full, full damage no, full damage three damage no coming in here but the bleed would have I think we determined later on that if I had gotten the bleeds on these rolls with him, I might actually have won the game. Because it yeah, but comes, comes down to very little. pretty good with your damage rolls so far, right? Yeah. I've, oh, I've been very lucky throughout this game in general, I think. And this I had to rely. This damage yet again. Yep. Yep. Expected but this is... I... One, actual damage three. This moment here was why we are commenting on this game. Because... <laughs> This yeah, is the best use I've move. ever, best use I've ever had of Ikea Mouse. <laughs> oh, I love it. And he's just a cool guy. I don't know. I've never, never seen anyone else use him. <clears throat> and I see the programmer move that happens next round. Do you still remember? Oh. No, I don't. So um, the surging okay. wave, which doesn't even get the slam, so missed oh. the kill. Oh, on Ikea Mouse? Mouse, and right. she hits again. Nice. Is it a she? Do you think it's a she? Looks like a boy to me. Or maybe I'm mm -hmm. biased. Probably. Probably you're right. <clears throat> what do you think of Ika Mouse in general? Do you have an opinion on this card? I, don't know I like it a lot, much. but I, I just don't play promos. So oh okay, I, I, I have a a bleed druid with focusing on a little bit more bleed than usual books do. Okay, and I would love to play Ika Mouse in there, but I just don't play promos because with oh. with the Crocs she can attack pretty safely and not get hit when something mm -hmm. is grappled. Yeah, and also I was always looking. Besides my crocs for a level two animal, which I can hide in elephant grass, 
and I think Ecamouse benefits greatly within uh, Elephant Grass. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't even have yeah. Elephant Grass in this book. Maybe I should have that. Hmm. Yeah, you should. Dorsus inside uh, Elephant Grass has basically <laughs> just three, which is disgusting. Right. That is disgusting. Oh, well, my Timberwolf has been rolling amazing in this game. Here we come in with a, an 8 damage, only 4 damage going in on the Gargoyle Sentry, but still with 4 armor, and then he comes up here and gives yeah, the 4 damage. Yeah, I think you almost kill a Gargoyle in this game. Yeah, <laughs> which is a feat in itself. Mm. Yeah. So here I'm trying to remove your guards, despite having a, a, an elusive guy in here. I still need to mm. make room for me throwing some attack spells at you to pop the shield and yeah, such. True. So I go on the offensive now. I removed four armor from your side this mm. turn, and I think now I'm accepting the race. I think. Yeah. That and would make it sense. will be a race. <sighs> but first, I will try to kill the Ekamos and fail miserably. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, if he had gotten the bleed there, that would have been amazing. But I can't complain when he rolls max damage. It's... Still, it's just really good. So after multiple, I think I've had like at least 10 games with this book where I was trying to seriously play Eager Mouse, and then it finally happened while I wasn't recording. So that's why we're doing this now. Hmm. <laughs> If any of the viewers have questions about Mage Wars 2.0 or something you want us to talk about, you can write the questions in the chat right now and we will address it later. So here we come with an Acidus, which is a creature that I really love and uh, love to see it yeah, in your he's book here. Very good. Yeah. But you're paying the so, three, three spell points for him. Yeah, unfortunately. The same as for a big ooze. And I pop so, your shield with a, uh, what's it called? Whoops. As a ball? As a ball. Why did you take no damage here? Oh, because of the shield. Uh -huh. Yeah. And the two roads. Yeah. Very good. Curl rock in hand. And you have the searching wave then and a teleport. No, brace yourself in the teleport. So no, no searching no wave searching this turn. Wave. Mm. Okay. Two damage going in on wizard. From mm -hmm. what? Oh, that was Ika Mouse again. Again, not rolling the bleed, which is too bad. But again, can't really complain. Getting damage on the very heavily defended wizard here is very nice. And best case use of Ika Mouse. For sure. And at this point, yeah, you're switching your targets from away from the deathlock and just hitting me instead, which I think. Maybe even you should have done that a little bit earlier. Because I think you would have won the damage race regardless. But maybe I was guarding him before, or her, or I probably was. Yeah, you were probably you were guarding the death lock. Yeah. And you pass all the time, so... I yep. Damage your page a little. Oh, well, uh, three <laughs> Really yeah. damage again, but you're at zero armor, I think. Am I at zero armor at this point? Yeah, you've taken away my rhino hide as well, so then I am at zero armor, precisely. Yeah. And so I'm, 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 I'm fully committed at this point. There's only one window for me here, and that is to try to kill your mage before you kill mine, because mm -hmm. I'm very obviously losing the long game here. No doubt about it. But you are at 21 out of 39, 32, I'm at 24 out of 34, so you are at 11 health and I'm at 10. And our creatures are exchanging blows to get a bit of guard and stuff like that. But two gargoyles is really hard to punch through. And here I remember the uh, freaking wounded prey, and I think you allow me to put a uh, roll and next die for that. I forgot to do it yeah. before attack. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Yeah, now it gets very, very ugly for me. It does? Oh. Yeah. You, get you remember this game way better than damage. I do. Okay. Yeah. Cast teleport. What are you teleporting? Oh, a jelly to me. 
Yeah. I remember I was a little bit weirded out by this move. But okay, you get really good damage on me. Oh, I die? Oh no, that's why the game thinks that the game uh, that there's no more turns up here because I forget that I have my Gator Toughness on right now, so I'm not dead. Oh uh, yeah. And then we right, right. keep doing it, but we keep playing in manual mode. So I think there's one more turn at max. Probably. Are you out of dispels? Because you could just dispel the Gator Toughness. Maybe you don't. Mm. I think I remember you saying you were playing the fun game after this, instead of killing me. And I get you yeah, with a Hurl Rock here. Oh, that's good damage, though. Yeah. yeah, you do. And you also hit a boulder next round. Right, because I have initiative next turn. So I actually have a, a, yeah, a legit yeah. kill chance on you here within the, the context yeah. of the game. But uh, Eight damage. Yet oh, again, a very good damage roll for the mm -hmm. record. Yeah, of course. Like I said, I'm very lucky, I think, throughout all this game, which eight, I have to be damage. against. Eight so damage. now I'm at 29. All right. Yeah. And now we do just everything manual. Yes. And I have a brace down and a Volteric Shield, which is basically um, negating seven so you need to roll 10 damage with eight dice right because you only have three hp remaining so you see so yeah if i had landed that lead is it two two rounds ago or whatever it would have ticked two, three times so you would have been dead here i think if that one yeah. freaking bleed would have landed <laughs> But I can't complain. I've been super lucky. So oh. here we go with the boulder, the final throw, and it does not deal enough damage. I re-roll it and deal two damage. So you're at one HP. Right. Yeah. yeah. And this is where I should dispel and the game is over, but I don't. Mm. Because I think we said we yeah, we do it like that. Alright. <laughs> Which is kind of funny, but then I move into the dense fog. That's why we go next turn, because now you can't hit me. Uh, I guess I'll leave it at speed 5 throughout here because it's the yeah. game is more or less over at this point point. and you have initiative next yeah. turn where the dense fog is gone so you have yeah but I, I don't kill you I heal right well, well, it gets funny because I refuse to <laughs> to just dispel it yeah it was a really fun game and I'm glad I finally got Ika Mouse to do something it's not the first time I cast him, but it is the first time I feel like he actually could have probably put me in a position to win the game, at least. And could have gone all the way with that freaking bleed. So yeah, now we have a party going on in zone. <laughs> <clears throat> what did I even plan here? Spray of barbs. Yeah, but then you put the, the dense fog down, so I couldn't do anything. And you had a little boulder in hand. I bet you also have more dispels in your book, so you could have easily gotten rid of it. Oh, I do my big... Uh, he, we, we get to see a, a pillar move in the next turn for those who were questioning why the pillar is so freaking good. I'm yeah. going to show you one of my... Uh, the real pillar trick, the one where you get the 80 dice out of it every time. You, you think uh, the pro gamer move? The That's the second pro <laughs> Second programmer move of the, the game, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's the one I've been using a lot in different books. Uh, and that's why I have, I think I have already put it down here. Force Wave and Pillar of Rage. A heal wand out with you at oh, 2 yeah, HP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you heal down you, to... You, you healed as well. So the Dispel was no kill here. Did I heal? How? Oh, from Dorcius. Right. So then I yeah, put down the pillar, move to the other side, and then force wave the whole zone into the pillar. That's one of my favorite ways to use pillar, because it rolls, that's four, then here comes six, so now we're up to ten dice, and, and then and comes... I can't, I can't even kill you this turn. Right, because I'm too far away. <laughs> okay, I'm putting it up to speed ten at this point, because it's kind of silly. 
But yeah, you can't kill me, so I guess Ikemaru gets another kill, hit at you, but you with the heal wand. It's really unlikely that I get to do anything here. And I'm being chased by all of your creatures. <clears throat> I'm pretty proud of getting you so close to death with this book. It, it really shows. And I think this was without the 10 channeling rule. So if I had had the, the 10 yeah, channeling. Yeah, it was even without the 10 channeling. Yeah. So. I, 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 when I made the book here, it, I didn't actually think that it would be competitive, but I'm starting to think that it, and I've tweaked it a bit since then. We can have a look at maybe, I don't know. What do you think of my book? Do you think it's competitive? I think it, it can be. I think yeah. you need a little bit more curses on Falala. Yeah, that's fair. But I don't know how long she lasts in your usual games. Uh, this is the this is I think the first time I lose her, but I mean, when I lose her, that will be how I lose the game if I get lose her early on. And it's not like people can't kill her, right? It's just people if if an enemy has the right cards, they can kill her maybe in round three, and then I don't get to benefit off of her at all. So I get another shot at you here. Where I needed maximum damage, and then another hit with a timber wolf, and I get to hit you with what? Why are you not guarding here? Because I think I intercepted. Okay. I don't know. The one gar gargoyle is on guard. I don't know how you can. Maybe afterwards. Uh, oh, ah. this is this is the surging wave. Here comes the surging wave, uh, and it did nothing, really. Ah, uh, two damage to Holy Liga Mouse. And Julie has closed the game window, and now Master has closed the game window. Alright, so we are done here. But GG was a fun one. <clears throat> GG, yeah, it really was. With a defend in your hand, nice. Any closing thoughts on this one? <clears throat> yeah, I really like this opening with Falella and uh, Dorcius. Mm -hmm. I actually think it's very strong. <clears throat> For but sure. I think yeah. to, to, to use Falella even a bit better, you need a few curses. <clears throat> yeah. After all, it's, it's to get Ikamos to work. But all in all, Dorsius gets really, really ugly to, to play against. And as mm -hmm. long as you have a backup plan versus each and any holy book that tries to snipe your Dorsius, then you should be good to go. I mean, I keep I use the charge to keep my creatures alive. That's the basic plan, right? All my creatures benefit off of any, any of the enchants that I have here so they can stay alive for longer. Mostly it key, it goes on Dorsius and the Mage, and then sometimes I give Felella a Gate of Toughness. But that's been about it, I think. I had more curses before, but then I, for for the reasons of spellbook points, I went away from it. Now, now I only have the Mark for Death, and then I took in like the Reclamation points since it's in uh, Reclamation Enchant. That since it's in school, it mm -hmm. saves me points, and it's kind of like a curse. But I agree, I could easily oh. have more. Oh, and by the way, wh why we closed the game here is because I wanted to kill even more of your stuff, and you said, shoot me now with your Gorgon, and I did. Yeah. I mean, I prefer it when people play to win. I know you could play for fun and keep playing, but I mean, that way you can keep yeah, playing. Yeah, it was over a while ago. Yeah. And uh, so Simon no Simon says, because... good game, guys. Yeah. All right.